Good morning. Welcome back. We're still in 1 Samuel chapter 20 now, verses 4 to 9. Jonathan and David are having a quite a heart-to-heart -heart discussion. Let's read it, then we'll think about it. So Jonathan said to David, Whatever you yourself desire, I will do for you. And David said to Jonathan, Indeed, tomorrow is the new moon, and I should not fail to sit with the king to eat. But let me go, that I may hide in the field until the third day at evening. If your father misses me at all, then say, David earnestly asked permission of me that he might run over to Bethlehem, his city, for there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. If he says thus, it is well, your servant will be safe. But if he is very angry, be sure that evil is determined by him. Therefore you shall deal kindly with your servant, for you have brought your servant into a covenant of the Lord with you. Nevertheless, if there is iniquity in me, kill me yourself, for why should you bring me to your father? But Jonathan said, Far be it from you, for if I knew certainly that evil was determined by my father to come upon you, then would I not tell you? So because of the length of this passage, it's gonna, we're going to break it over a couple of days. So this conversation is going on, and David says, Look, I'm at my wit's end. Your father is determined evil against me. And Jonathan says, We can't let that happen. What can I do to help? So David comes up with this plan to be absent. Check Saul's attitude in relation to his absence through this idea of the yearly sacrifice he would be allegedly attending. Verse 7 kind of lines it out. If he says thus, it is well, your servant will be safe. But if he is very angry, be sure that his evil is determined by him. So the idea here is to figure out what can be done. Uh, what is the stance of Saul once and for all? Can, can David ever get back on Saul's good side? David is looking to Jonathan for some help here. Jonathan, of course, Saul's son, the, the heir apparent. David is quite innocent, and Jonathan and David both know it. So they're going to work out a plan here to, to size up Saul's attitude toward David. So we'll see more about that tomorrow morning. And this kind of brings us to a question. Uh, how much power should one individual have? A king, uh, a human king, sometimes has too much power. And because of that, we've kind of gone to the situation where power is distributed among a legislature or a group of a parliament, a group of people in the government. And today, it still seems like having a lot of power centrally concentrated isn't really safe, whether you have a king or whether you have a, a whole group of people, even hundreds of, of people that run the government. But strangely, you know, when you look at Twitter, when you look at different things out there in the news, government is always so central. It's like always, every day, it's politics. What's going on? What did politician so-and-so, what did senator so-and-so say? Those things, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be, you know, waiting with bated breath to see what the latest uh, word from Senator X is. Government, human governments are, are the very best you get in the whole Bible is what? One that for a brief period of time has two horns like a, like a lamb, but, but eventually it speaks like a dragon. That's like the best you get in the whole Bible. So we need to make sure that our life is not centered, and here we not centered on government or politics. And here we see David very frustrated. He wants to be a servant of the Most High, but he's continually, you know, stepping out of the way as the king throws a spear at him. We need to do our best to live our life in a way that's pleasing to Jesus and let God take care of the rest. So I hope we can keep our focus on heavenly things, but live them out in this world. And that's not going to mean being super involved in politics. Sorry, that's just just the word. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, there are many distractions in our world, things that are seen to be uh, preeminent, things that are seen to be absolute. We must know the latest uh, politics. No, we mustn't. No, we mustn't. Help us, Lord, to, to know what's in your word, to live a personal relationship with Jesus, and recognize that you are on your throne and we can trust in you and all these other pieces. If we seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, all these other pieces will fall into place. May we not lose our focus on being servants of you, the Most High God, even in these crazy hours. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So may God be our helper as we seek to live his way and uh, relate to the powers that be, the human powers that be, in the most peaceful and rational way we can, but we must be doing God's work. We must be doing God's things. God be with you today.